Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today in Microsoft Excel, I'm going to take a look at the compound monthly growth rate, which is a great formula to know. If you're a YouTuber, you want to know this. If you're a business person, you want to know this. Most people, a lot of people will do the compound annual growth rate, C-A-G-R. But this came up the other day when Christian, who does my website, and also edits most of my videos and comes up with my thumbnails, asked me when he would have X number of subscribers in YouTube. And I said, well, give me a month, several months back. I said, give me your last month. I figured out his compound monthly growth rate. I used it to forecast out. And he said, that is really cool. How did you do it? He goes, you ought to make a video on that. So this is, he requested it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should. So... Whether you're a YouTuber or a business, I love the compound annual growth rate. But the reason I want to use monthly is maybe I don't have years of data to do the annual growth rate. So I'm going to do the compound monthly because I do have months of data. So in my example, I'm going to start off with March 2020 and we had revenue of 100. So this works with revenue, subscribers, views, anything numeric that you're looking out monthly and we did 100 in March 2020 April was 115 May 138 and then look we went down so if you're trying to figure out percentages I would take the 115 minus the 100 divided by the 100 so I had a 15 percent increase another increase, but then I had a decrease. Well, I want the compound monthly growth rate smooths this out. So I'm going to get rid of those percentages. Here we go. I'm going to do the compound monthly growth rate and do it broken out. Then I'll do it as one formula. Next, I'll show you the Excel formula even though there's technically not an Excel function to do this, there is one that will work. I'm also going to then use the compound monthly growth rate and forecast out with it. That's what Christian had me do. And I actually do that myself with a lot of my data on YouTube. So here is the compound monthly growth rate broken out. You first start off taking the ending balance. And these are actual numbers. These aren't forecasted. So make sure you use an actual number and you divide the ending by the beginning. Don't subtract the beginning from the ending, divide. The next part is you take the number one and you divide it by the number of periods. And people get this wrong all the time. If you look up here, you're going to say, Chris, you got seven months and I do. The first month even though I used it in the first calculation, because that was my starting, you don't count that month in the months because that's your base month. So instead of seven, I'm going to divide by six. I'm going from April through September. The next step is you take the first calculation, which was ending divided by beginning, and you raise it to the power of the months you just figured out. And the last step is really simple. You just subtract the number one. I've already done the formatting on this. It showed up as a decimal. I went and made it a percentage right up here in the number group. And I made the decimal two places. So there it is broken out. I will use formula text. So you can see this. This file will also be available to you in my YouTube description. Now, if you want to see this all as one formula, let's just do that. Because in real life, this is what I would do. I would do equals. It's the same steps. The ending divided by the beginning. And then you're going to raise it to the power of 1 divided by the number of months. Don't, calc don't count the base month again. And then you're just going to subtract 1. That is what I did right above it. But here it is, is one formula. If I had a calculator, I could do that with a calculator right there. Same exact answer. I've already done the formatting. Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel does not technically have a compound annual growth rate function. 
It does not have a compound monthly growth rate function, but we do have the RRI function in Excel that works. This is going to return the equivalent interest rate. Three arguments, all three are required. Unlike other financial functions, there the PV is present value, FV is future value, so FV is going to be 200, PV is going to be the 100, NPER is the number period, we've already decided it was 6, don't count the base. Unlike other Excel financial functions, there's no negatives in here. Sometimes there'll be a negative PV, but not in this one. So here we go, 6, comma, present value, 100, comma, future value, 200. That is it. I better get the same thing I have above. Again, I've already done the formatting. Point out that that last one, C15, that is an Excel function, RRI. The rest are just formulas. All right. So there is your compound monthly growth rate. Real quick test. We knew we had 100. Remember those percentages I had going up and down every month? So we're saying that we grew by 100 times the number one plus that percentage. It doesn't matter which one I click. I click cell B14. I'm going to fill this down the screen so make B14 absolute reference. I press the F4 key, F4 function key. If the F4 function key does not work for you, just type the dollar signs in manually. So it's dollar sign B, dollar sign 14. So this is smoothing it out. This is my compound monthly growth rate of 12.25%. I better get 200, by the way. Let's see. <laughs> there you go. So instead of having those percentages going in up and down and all that, the compound monthly growth rate just does it for every month. But now that we know that, the 12.25%, we can forecast out. So let's do that. I'm going to do this in G1. So we have the month of September 9 2020. We have 200. I'm going to do a 3D reference equals 200. If I wanted, you wanted to type 200 in there, you can, but I prefer what I just did, a 3D reference equals B8. The next month is October 31 days, December. November, close enough, good enough. Uh, you don't have to do this, but one, two, highlight those. I want to forecast 12 months out. I don't actually have to do this in column F. I'm just showing you that I'm going out 12 months. If you wanted to forecast out 18 months, you could. It's up to you. I'm just going to go 12 months. Um, here we go again. I should end up with... So in September 2020... I've got an actual number of 200. I'm forecasting out based on my compound monthly growth rate, where will I be in September of 2021? And then I'm going to end this up by checking it with one more formula. Here we go. The same thing we did in C equals H1 plus 1 times Again, I'm going to just pick one. Absolute reference again, the F4 key. <clears throat> Helps if you get your mathematical signs correct. <laughs> so, so it's H1 times 1 plus. There we go. 200 times 12.25, close enough, 224. Crosshairs. Fill down, so in September of next year, I should end up with $800 in revenue for that month. I'm at 200 right now. I figured out my compound monthly growth rate. And again, you could have gone as far as you wanted to. One more test. You can do this all as one time. So this is a check figure for that 800 You take equals where you're at right now, which is... 200 um, times the number one plus your compound monthly growth rate. And then I'm going to raise it to how many months am I looking out? 12. 
If I was looking out three years, I would have done 36. If I was looking out a year and a half, I would have done 18. I should, I should get 800 again, by the way. And I do. So there is that one right up in the formula bar. I will do a quick formula text for you. Just so you can have that. There you go. Compound monthly growth rate. Compound annual growth rate would have worked the exact same way. But I did not have years of data to look at. I only had months. I appreciate your time. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Let me know if you have any comments or questions about this. There'll be chapters in this and the file will be available down below and I actually use this all the time myself. Have a good day.